A father's pride. A mother's joy. A young woman's dream. A moment. A memory in the making. Hearts full. Smiles broad. Happiness you can touch. Picture perfect. My name is Mary Jane Happy. I've been in New York for 18 months. We moved here from Michigan. Both of my children are here. Emily was thinking about getting married and we thought this would be a good place for us all to be together again. Emily and I are really close and always have shared everything, so it seemed like such good fortune that we had relocated here when we did. I met uh, my husband, Ernest, uh, actually at Einstein. Uh, we are both in the same MD-PhD class. So we got engaged in December and then started planning, which was great because it was sort of a, it was a really fun thing to do with my mom. I know she'd been looking forward to it for ever, probably, <laughs> since I was born. We had a great time. We did what, you know, every mother-daughter does when they plan a wedding. We looked for a wedding dress for her and a dress for me and dresses for the bridesmaids and I was uh, a couple months late for my mammogram and I wanted to get that taken care of. The facility where I went to have my mammogram I did the initial biopsy and came back with a diagnosis of cancer. The only thing I could think of Seriously, it wasn't, you know, oh my God, I have cancer, or oh my God, I'm going to die, was, oh my God, I can't call Emily and tell her I have cancer. I can't. I can't put this on her right now. I think I was the first, or one of the first people that she called, uh, and I was at work, and, you know, I hopped on a train to come into the city to, to be with her. And then I called my husband, and, um, and then I asked Emily to call my son because I knew I couldn't handle that phone call. And we all got together that night. We knew that we would need to do surgery at the very least. You know, where did we want that to happen and who did we want to be on our team? You know, my mom and I were close before and planning the wedding and everything. And then once she got diagnosed, I think we were even closer and the wedding meant you know, even more to us. So this was June 21st, six weeks before the wedding. It was Emily's recommendation that we select a facility that had a cancer center, not knowing where this was gonna go. I wanted her in an, in an environment that was both convenient for her so that she could do whatever treatment was required, uh, but also had specialists who really would be able to tailor the treatment specifically for her type of cancer. After we had looked at all the possibilities, Einstein really came to be the best choice for us. They have a cancer care center, they had physicians with amazing resumes, and probably most importantly um, was the opportunity for clinical trials. The follow-up appointments after surgery are with the surgeon and with your new oncologist, and for me that was Dr. Sperano. When I enter into this partnership with my patient, it's with a full expectation that our goal is cure and we're not really going to settle for anything less. I was so impressed with him and, and felt so comfortable with him that I trusted him with my life. So my job really as the medical oncologist is to identify what is that risk of so occurrence and what, what can we do to reduce that risk of occurrence to the extent possible. Mary Jane had a, um, an early stage breast cancer that, and she was rendered disease free by her surgery but she was at um, high risk for relapse. Not because of the extent of the cancer at the time of diagnosis, but because of the aggressiveness of the specific uh, cancer type that she had called triple negative breast cancer. He had kind of laid out, there's a 70% cure rate um, without any therapy. You can bump that up 10% if you do aggressive chemo and then there was the opportunity to do to become involved in a clinical trial which could bump it up another five percent. The trial that she was offered and she elected, elected to participate in involved giving her the state-of-the-art best available chemotherapy but in addition to that uh, testing a new drug. It's another five percent chance that I will live cancer-free 
Why wouldn't I do that? And can you imagine all of the things that can happen in your life in that 5%? It's my son's wedding. It's my daughter's kids. It's my Pulitzer Prize. You know, a lot of living can happen in a 5%. Mary Jane's treatment is, is an example of how clinical research can be applied and help us learn how to better treat patients based on basic science research done in laboratories. The Einstein Cancer Center is one of about 60 uh, centers funded by the National Cancer Institute to conduct both basic and clinical research, indicating that the work that's being done here is of the highest quality. The drug that she received, Taxol, the mechanism of action of that drug was actually discovered by Dr. Susan Horwitz in 1979. It had just been isolated from the bark of a tree, and the National Cancer Institute asked me to try to figure out how this worked in cells. The fact that, you know, the drugs that I received were conceived here, you know, is, I don't know, there's something comforting in that. Today, this drug has been given to over one million patients. Pretty exciting. This is the way progress is made in cancer research. We have to be able to translate the effects of what we see in the laboratory all the way to Mary Jane. A lot of women who are diagnosed with breast cancer, they're overwhelmed with the emotion of it, and I was too. Mary Jane comes to Albert Einstein Cancer Center for her medical care in her clinical trials, but she also comes for her supportive care. And in addition to getting medical treatment, she comes and, and speaks with a counselor about the experience of being a cancer patient. So she gets the support she needs on an emotional level as well. She is a person who does not judge me, and I can go in and talk to her about the things I cannot talk about with anyone else. And it's a wonderful opportunity for me to to take care of me, and, uh, and it's a program that has, I think is invaluable. After Mary Jane has, has completed her treatment, our plan is to see much less of each other. But I look forward you know, to being through with the clinical trial and having my mind go to other places other than my, my treatment. She'll have her energy back, and she'll feel healthy again, and she can really sort of move on from this, put it behind her, and really in enjoy you know doing what she loves to do. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that I will be here you know to see Emily's children and my son get married and you know just so many other things that um, I'm hopeful. I'm confident that Mary Jane is going to be able to return back to her normal life. Together all of us whether we're participants or supporters um, will eventually find a cure. And you know, I think that's what we have to we have to do. We have to work together to find a cure. We will find a cure. So every woman who feels a lump in the night and hears the diagnosis they feared can survive breast cancer. That is why the women's division is proud to support the work of Dr. Joseph Sperano and all those working to find cures for cancer at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine.